Hello, 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 knowledge seekers, and thank you for joining me for this segment on Secret Societies. This is something that you guys have asked me for, and here it is. So, Secret Societies, let's talk about it. Does that mean that secret means that it's a dangerous society? I don't know, but by the end of what I'm about to share with you, you have to decide. You have to decide whether it is a dangerous society or not. We've heard societies like Kabbalah, we've heard of the triads, we've heard of the mafia in Cosa Nostra, we've heard of the Illuminati, we've heard of Freemasons and all of that, but we're gonna cover all of those and then some. Because again, you wanna know why um, you know, first, what is the definition of a secret society? Because they're all around us and it's always best to empower yourself with knowledge, right? So you not, you're not just going by third hand information or third party information and hearing certain things without knowing fully what they mean. A lot of you all have seen the book entitled Secret Societies by John Lawrence Reynolds on my table while I'm teaching. And some people have decided, oh, nope, secret societies, um, I'm unsubscribing without understanding what secret societies are, not even wanting to hear. But again, by the end of this lesson, hopefully you will understand by definition what secret societies are, why people join secret societies, who belongs to secret societies, what do the members look like? Can you leave after you've taken a pledge or an oath? What happens when you renounce and or denounce a secret society? Also modern day secret societies and also book and movie references. It's so important for you to know that secret societies exist because some of your family members are in secret societies. Some of your kids go away to school and they join secret societies. Um, People that you attend church with are uh, a part of secret societies. And so you wanna know, are they dangerous or not? Or are you just going by third party information? So again, hopefully I can equip you with knowledge and spark something in you to do your own research and to ask more questions so that it doesn't come across as something that's spooky, weird, dangerous. Some of them may be dangerous, some of them may not be dangerous, but to understand why is most important. So let's get into it. Let's get into it, let's get into it, let's get into it. First, I want to equip you with a scripture. And you'll understand why we're talking about um, this particular scripture. It is uh, scripture, the book of Matthew. Mm -hmm. The book of Matthew chapter six, verse 24. Matthew 6, 24 reads, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. I want you all to keep that at the forefront of your mind. So I, as I share with you um, the origin of secret societies, okay? Again, Matthew 6, 24 reads, no one, want, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can read beyond that if you like, but I want you to keep that at the forefront of your mind. And I'll come back at the end and repeat the same thing. So again, drop your comments below after you listen to this. Tell me what you think. If you've ever belonged to a society and you either and or renounced and or denounced the society. You don't have to give the name of the society that you uh, joined and either denounced or renounced the society and or. Um, and what you've heard, again, you don't have to, you don't have to disclose information about whatever society you join, but what you've heard maybe can help somebody else and encourage someone else, okay? So let's open this up. So let's get started. What is a secret society? So by definition, a secret society is any of a large range of membership organizations or associations that utilize secret initiations or other rituals whose members often employ unique oaths, grips, which are handshakes, or other signs of recognition. 
elements of secrecy may vary from a mere password to elaborate rituals, private languages, costumes, and symbols. The term may be applied to such widely diverging groups as U.S. college fraternities and sororities, the Ku Klux Klan, the International Freemasonry, as well as to similar phenomena in ancient and pre-colonial cultures. That is the definition of secret society. All right. We talked about the scriptural reference. Again, Matthew 6, 24. We also share the definition of what a secret society is. Now let's talk about why do people join? There are various reasons for why people join secret societies. Sometimes people want to join secret societies because they just want to belong. They feel lost. They've joined a new school. They've joined a new church. They've joined some new organization and they want to belong to something. Maybe they've never belonged to anything. Maybe people haven't chosen them to belong to certain things, right? Maybe it's because sometimes people join because it's part of their family legacy or they want to begin a new legacy. They want to begin a new family legacy. So they may say, hey, nobody in my family has ever joined X, Y, and Z organization and I want to be the first so that I can open up the door for my children, my grandchildren, and other people in my family. I want to reach back sometimes to aunts, uncles, their kids and so on and so forth and help open that door. I want to sit on some boards. I want to do this. I want to do that. But in order for me to gain access or to maybe speed up a process, I need to, I feel like I need to be a part of this organization, right? For some people, and I'm only tossing out examples here because again, I'm going to share some more information with you in a second. For some people, they don't realize that the light that they're seeking outside of themselves actually exists within. So remember, if a person is operating in fear that I won't, I won't be accepted, then where is there room for faith? I need to be a part of an organization in order for me to do X, Y, and Z. Instead of saying, going back to Matthew 6 and 24, I can't serve two masters. If I seek the light within me, then I don't need to seek the light outside of myself, right? I don't want to be a person who is divided in my thinking and who I serve. I serve source and not my fear, not my doubt, those things. So when we pull the devil card in tarot, that represents fear, it represents doubt, it represents addictions, it represents illusions, and so on and so forth. Kind of getting the picture so far? All right, let's keep it moving forward. I want to share something with you from just an excerpt from the book Secret Societies um, from John Lawrence Reynolds, right? The reason why I mentioned that particular scripture, and there's other scriptures to support serving two masters, right? This is where, this is the origin of this. 2,000 years ago, a secret society terrified Rome. Its members were said to enjoy incest between brothers and sisters, eat human flesh, and drink human blood, and identify themselves by flashing large symbols. These tales titillated ordinary Romans, but their politicians worried more about the sexed refusal to worship the emperor. It was agreed Something had to be done to control these perverts, these insurgents, these Christians. The story of early Christianity exemplifies the complexity of secret societies and the reactions to them. On one hand, Christians were part of a secret cult with beliefs and practices far from mainstream Rome. On the other, on the other hand, they had to remain hidden because although they posed no threat, they faced grave danger. And again, it goes back to, and I'm reading, I'm reading this excerpt from the book, Secret Societies. Remember, I tell you, sometimes people join organizations because they may feel like they face grave danger. Some people go far, they move away, they, have, they join organizations and they feel like, I need protection, right? 
And so it goes on further to say, uh, again, I'm reading from the book Secret Societies, the result was the most vicious of circles. The more they were persecuted, the more they stayed secret, and the more they stayed secret, the more they were feared and persecuted. Irreverent but in style, but seriously researched, Secret Society reveals the truth about more than a dozen of history's most notorious organizations from the assassins of 11th century Persia to the so-called Kabbalists of contemporary California who have nothing to do with the real Kabbalah, a body of spiritual thought derived from ancient Jewish texts. While a few are clearly criminal, most are basically, basically for not benign fraternal of strictly men groups, yet some seem to exert an unusual amount of power largely because of the men they attract or recruit as members. For example, Yale Skull and Bone Society customarily consisted of wealthy, well-connected, highly ambitious young men determined to make their mark on the world. Despite the adolescent absurdity of some of their rituals, at one time, new members had to describe their sexual exploits while lying naked in a coffin. Bonesmen, as they're called, have played a prominent part in the CIA and had important roles in foreign affairs, including the Bay of Pigs, Vietnam, and Iraq. Some questions about secret societies may remain unanswered, but two things are certain. There will always be people who join them and others who believe nonsense about them. And that is an excerpt from the book Secret, Secret Society from John Lawrence Reynolds. Let's get more into it. So that is why when people decide to leave secret societies, they start to remember those pledges and oaths they made to that particular secret society. And they decide, am I serving another master besides God? Again, for people who are turned off by the word secret society, remember, a lot of people have family members, their kid, you know, family members, whether parents, kids, aunts, uncles, because who does members of secret society look like? All of us. Looks like all of us, right? So you sometimes you can't, you don't know. So that's why turning back into the light within yourself will help you to discern who is who and what is what, right? So some of the people who are in secret society and of course this is this is not all the people that's in secret society but some of them are spiritual leaders some of them are judges some of them are law enforcement some are military personnel some are government employees etc i think you get the point right i think you get the point bottom line is they look like you and me the very existence of secret societies has often prompted antagonism and fostered accusations of immorality, subversion, and hearsay. Such claims were made against the Roman mystery cult and were used to justify the ruthless suppression of the Knights of Templar in the early 14th century. Philip IV of France accused the Knights of heretical practices, but these charges were entirely unfounded, and Philip seemed to have acted largely out of the desire to seize the Templar's vast wealth. Here are a name of some secret societies, again, that you may or may not have heard of. The Assassins, which are also known as the Assassins Brotherhood, who are who were at odds with the Templars. You may have heard the Templars, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the Priory of Sion. You may have heard the Druids and, and the Gnostics. The Prior of uh, Sion are supposed to be the keepers of the Holy Grail. You may have heard of the Kabbalah. Again, we're not talking about the Kabbalah in California. We're talking the Kabbalists of contemporary California. Uh, we're talking about... Uh, from ancient Jewish text, where also you may have heard of the um, Rosicrucian, you may have heard of the Triads, you may have heard of the Mafia and Costa Nostra, you may have heard of Yakuza, you may have heard of Wicca, you may have heard of Skull and Bones, right? And also the secret societies in 
uh, pop culture or popular culture. Certainly you have heard of fraternities and sororities. A lot of them, like I said before, you may have heard of names, but because you may hear bits and pieces here and there and may not fully understand what the definition of what a secret society is, you may have just lumped everything in the same pot and thought, okay, they're all evil, they're all dangerous, but you have to be the judge based on your research and your knowledge. And so that's where I come in to try to help you with that information. So this is not judging any society whatsoever. Again, some of your kids may have had to join a society or family members may have felt like they needed to join a society, especially if they're away from home, they're away from you. They may feel like I don't have anybody and I want to belong. And so I don't want to stand out. I don't want, I don't want to be looked upon as different. So also keep that in to consideration too. And some people may actually feel like, hey, if I'm the first person, I'm opening doors for my family. I want to stand out. I want to make a difference in my family. So again, let's keep it moving forward. Secret societies are by their very nature made up of persons presumably oriented towards similar ends. These ends usually manifest the characteristics that differentiates a given secret society from all others. That is to say, the ends are secret. So admission to membership almost always involves the explicit obligation to preserve such secrecy and penalties for its violation are likewise explicitly stated. The explicitness involved may sometimes apply only to the members of the society for, for secrecy may be complete that even the existence of some members of the society for secrecy may be complete that even existence of some societies is not revealed to outsiders. Revolutionary and similarly subversive secret societies are cases in point. More frequently is partial uh, secrecy, where the existence of the society is publicly acknowledged or even proclaimed, as was the case of the Ku Klux Klan in the United States after the American Civil War, and again in the 1920s and throughout the Civil Rights era in the 1950s and the 60s. At least some of the ends are made generally known. Some of the society ceremonies are performed openly and public cooperation with other groups have fundamentally differing ends may occasionally be undertaken. But obviously on the other side of all of that, we have secret societies who would lose their reason for existence if secrecy were entirely abandoned. So many fraternal organizations, for example, maintain the secrecy of their rituals into the 21st century. Although, as the case of college fraternities and sororities, these survive largely as formalities. Other academic societies, most notably Yale's University Skull and Bones, and similar groups at other Ivy League schools have traditionally guarded their secrets much more closely. So now you can see, let's say for instance, your child is accepted into an Ivy League school and they either show an interest or are recruited in some way, shape, form, or fashion. A lot of times people have to show interest in the group sometimes they are recruited to join groups. And so in, in that recruitment process, of course, things are not gonna be shared with them up front, but you find out, hey, if I'm a part of this group, then I'll find out on the back end what it's about. I just wanna be associated with it. So hopefully somebody is getting, getting the point Right, so you again ask yourself, are they all dangerous? Are all secret societies dangerous? Does the word secret mean dangerous? Or what would be the reason why somebody would wanna join a group in the first place, right? You also learn that the essential part of joining a society is rarely, if ever, legitimately known to those who are not initiates, particularly where the really significant ends are concerned in order to ensure full and exact knowledge of these ends on the part of the initiates a group's ritual 
or their rituals tend to emphasize painstakingly accurate repetition, repetition and close guardianship. They are often designed to provide a strong emotional appeal impressing the members with the gravity of the ceremonial occasion and the authenticity of the knowledge therefore revealed. In many secret societies, the ceremony is cast in dramatic form and contains episodes taken from holy books, reverend legends, and episode, episodes thought to be of crucial historical importance. Often members play parts in this dramatic portrayal of the origin of the society, and in such portrayal, the candidate for initiation usually has a key role. So imagine someone who has never been chosen for anything, and now they are taking part in this ceremony, and they're giving a key, given a key role. So that's what I want people to consider. Like consider if you're given a key role and you've never ever been chosen for anything and now someone's giving you a key role, you may feel like, wow, I'm actually in. I can't stop going. I'm not, I'm not going to stop, right? I'm doing this. People make up reasons in their mind. I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for my, 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 um, my legacy. I'm doing this because I heard being a part of this secret society or this organization is going to get me X, Y, and Z. So for instance, the initiate may undergo a symbolic journey fraught with obstacles and temptations and at the end, therefore receive the quote unquote truth or esoteric wisdom viewed as the society's characteristics possession. In this process, physical objects such as keys, pillars, swords, books, globes, may be endowed with symbolic meaning so that their display on later occasions help to reinstate, psychologically speaking, the awesomeness of the initiatory ceremony. If you've never been a part of a secret society, it's important to note that many secret societies operate through a system of degrees of progressively higher rank in which secrets are revealed step by step. Initiation is therefore hierarchical. Members at the higher level are more fully aware of the ends pursued by the society than those at the lower. Again, keep in mind, if you are at the lower level, let's say there's 32 degrees and you're at the first degree or the first four degrees, you're not gonna know as much as someone who's at the highest level of the degrees. So you may just be happy just to be a part of it. We all know those people who are just happy to be a part of something, right? They, they're, you know, we just know, we just know. So consequently, secrets of recognition are graded. That is to say, therefore, you know, there is an ordinary, ordinarily a grip or handshake, password, ceremonialized greeting, a question and answer form, esoteric phrase, a secret jargon, serving many of the purposes of a special language that distinguishes even the lowest initiate from non-members. The society has secrets within secrets. Those who are more fully initiated make every effort by the use of special names or deals or revelations to set themselves apart on the one hand and then the other to stimulate the lower ranks to the effort necessary to reach the exalted degrees. So hopefully you all are starting to understand how this works. And so again, there are varying degrees and there are expectations at every level. So again, take from this what you will. So for instance, beginning initiates are therefore impressed with the necessity for silence. Not only is this the case, but the art of remaining silent without giving offense to fellow members at lower levels is imparted by direct example. This is especially important when quote unquote final truth and the real ends of society are known only to those in the more advanced degrees, and even more so when as few in a few societies, the supreme leaders remain unknown to the rank and file membership. So according to some texts, the most dangerous secret society, and this is only according to sources claiming inner knowledge of the group's true purpose, 
The Freemasons. Masonic conspirators chose international leaders to launch wars, control currency, and infiltrate society. So Masons actually dominated Western politics and cultures for years. So among their members were U.S. President George Washington and Harry S. Truman, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Duke Ellington, some of the other names that you may have known about who are Freemasons, which were the most popular, Benjamin Franklin, Albert Pike, John Wayne, the actor, Davy Crockett, uh, Andrew Jackson, uh, Sir Alexander Fleming, Henry Ford, Peter Sellers, Gene Autry, um, Douglas MacArthur, Cecil DeMille, Charles Lindbergh, Andrew Johnson, Glenn Ford, Alexander Pope, Irvin Berlin, you can look up the rest. But those seem to be, according to some texts, the ones who had the most power. So imagine someone who has never, and I have to go back to this, who has never been chosen for anything, seeing this is like, oh my God, stars in my eyes. I really, really, really want to be a part of this organization, whatever the organization is, right? So the secrets aren't known to, to the public, only to the people who are a part of the group and then the things that you have to go through, the, the various degrees that you need to go through in order to, that's even if you are even selected. So now that you know the definition of a secret society, you also know the scriptural, scriptural reference that I gave you, um, some ideas to why people join, who belongs to these groups, who some of the members look like, um, another question people have is, can you leave these secret societies after you've taken an oath and how, after you've pledged, can you leave? The answer is yes, but it's usually a lengthy process of you returning back to pure consciousness of you returning back to operating in full faith and coming across. And it's usually somebody else from the outside, something God sends somebody who may have already either renounced or denounced um, to, to come back and get you because they may see you as lost, still looking for the light, right? Um, and it's, it's entirely up to you. Some people have said, no, there's no way I'm ever, all the things that this society has done for me or this organization has done for me, scram, get out of here. <laughs> I don't want to leave. I'm never leaving. I took this pledge, this oath for life. I'm never leaving. And then you have some people that say, they go back to that scripture, Matthew 6 and 24, and they feel like, wow, I thought this was a Christian organization, but I feel like I'm serving two masters. I really need to rethink this. So some people live with that for months, for years, trying to decide, torn, still going to meetings and still participating, but are, their spirit is being pulled in a different direction, is being pulled higher instead of operating in flesh, operating in ego, operating in fear, operating in doubt right? And so to renounce an organization means that you formally declare one's abandonment. You reject the organization. You stop using or consuming. To denounce means you publicly declare to the organization to be wrong or even to be evil. So there's tons of, there's tons of videos on YouTube that you can look up and see where people have not only renounced, but denounce their organization and they'll tell you why so i'll leave that to you to go look up again if you have any questions whatsoever or you feel like you want to share information again you don't have to uh say what organization you renounced or denounced but if you want to help people on their journey and to say why you would remain a part of an organization and again you don't have to give your information or why would you leave an organization? What was the reason why you joined in the first place? Were you away at school? Where did you move away from the town or the city or state you grew up in? Or did you move to another country and you wanted to be a belong or be a part of something? Uh, once you joined, how did you feel? Did you feel like finally you found your family 
or this was your soul tribe or did you feel like wow what in the world did i get myself into what did i get myself into right and like i said before there's secret societies all around us sometimes people um announce what organization that they're in because they're looking for other soul tribes especially if you move to a new city and new state or new town or, or somewhere new country for some people and they may say you know what let me let me go online and see if i can connect with my sisters or brothers that's the easiest way for me to get acclimated for me to feel like i'm not alone on this in this world right let me reconnect with those people um again secret societies are everywhere like i said before and the courtrooms law enforcement military personnel government employees etc your family so on and so forth so before you say that they're all evil consider being gentle with family members and loved ones and helping them to create a safe space for them to feel like they are they are loved by you that you're extending grace because some of them may be deciding trying to decide whether they want to stay in an organization or leave an organization and how we treat people may help them may help them along in their journey and not harshly judging anybody and so modern day secret societies modern day secret societies one of the things that was pointed out in the book a secret society like i said by uh john lawrence reynolds and obviously there's a lot of books that you can purchase about secret societies and again arming yourself with information empowering yourself with information will help you to understand why some people have joined secret societies and also understand why some people completely reject secret societies. I mean, do they have all the information before they reject family members and loved ones who belong to some, or are they just, were they just misinformed? I mean, what, what was the reason, right? But one of the things that, uh, one of the things that John Lawrence Reynolds mentioned in his book was that the Harry Potter series, when he talked about, there's a, it towards the end of the book, and he talked about, um, secret societies and popular culture and how they show up in television shows and how they show up in books and sometimes people don't even know what they're reading they don't even know what they're watching you know on television um the harry potter series he he mentioned you know uh secret societies he says at least three secret societies such as the order of the phoenix are involved in the potter plots each threatening not only the hero but is his uh cohorts but the secret, the security of the world itself. He also mentioned the television show. I'm not sure if a lot of you all have heard of uh, the Honeymooners, um, Jackie Gleason's Honeymooners, where frequently included the internal order of friendly sons of the raccoons, whose lodge members acted suspiciously like masons and shriners, engaging in code words and flapping the tails of their coonskin caps to each other. Another example that he gave in his book is The Simpsons. He said that The Simpsons included the stonecutters in several of its plots, clearly based on Freemasonry. Masonry. The stonecutters meet weekly in a pyramid-shaped building where they honor their sacred parchments before drinking heavily and playing ping pong. Also, we know about The Godfather, um, we know about Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider series. And so I wanna share a list of movies with you all in case you all have heard of these movies, but they also have secret societies in these movies as well. The Dark Web that came out in 2021, Secret Society, The Second Born Royals, which came out in 2021, Assassin's Creed, which came out in 2016, Kingsman, which came out in 2014, The Movie Wanted, which came out in 2008, Poison Ivy, that came out in 2008, The Da Vinci Code, which is pretty popular. You all have heard of that book, and most people have seen that, or a lot of people have seen that movie, came out in 2006. The Skulls came out in 2000. 
the uh, Sunset Society came out in 2018, and then Skulls Part Three came out in 2004. So as you as you see, there are reasons why people join secret societies. It's all around us. Again, you may not even you may not even realize that some of your family members or friends that you're connected to belong to secret societies. If you if you've joined a secret society yourself, or you have either renounced or denounced or both a secret society just you can be vague in your responses tell reasons why people would join and why why they would leave a secret society where have you heard stories where people are afraid of leaving what what dangers did you that they think they were gonna that um they were going to what was going to happen to them if they decided to leave again youtube is filled with stories about why people left the fear and danger that they felt leaving a society sometimes it takes people weeks to decide they're going to leave sometimes they just need a little extra nudge to leave some people will never leave um and again operating from a frequency of love agape love so that is what i have for you thank you so much for asking me to do this segment on secret societies and hopefully that offers some more insight um, without any judgment whatsoever. That's what I have for you and stay tuned for the next one. But don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, Knowledge Seekers. Bye.